uh, in the last two modules you have learnt about uh, different organic reactions like addition, substitution and elimination reactions and today we will be concentrating on uh, bioorganic reactions. So, uh, bioorganic reactions are uh, connected with biomolecules. Uh, uh, biomolecules are bioorganic compounds. What are bioorganic compounds are? Bioorganic compounds uh, are the organic compounds which are found in living system like plants, animals, etcetera. So, they are known as bioorganic compounds. Examples like carbohydrates, so bioorganic compounds are the organic compounds which are found in uh, living system. Uh, they are examples like uh, carbohydrates, uh, proteins, lipids, amino acids, nucleic acids, etcetera. Uh, out of this uh, we will be concentrating in this on uh, proteins and uh, lipids. So, we will start with proteins. Proteins are uh, one of the type of biopolymers and the monomeric unit uh, present in proteins is alpha amino acids so that is they are polymers of uh, alpha amino acids. They are polymers of alpha amino acids. So, these alpha amino acids uh, name itself clearly indicates they contain two functional groups one is amino functional group the other one is uh, carboxylic functional group. These amino acids uh, they are held together uh, by the amide bonds that are formed between uh, carboxylic group of one amino acid and amino group of the second amino acid. So, uh, which can be in general represented as. So, this represents uh, in general uh, a polymer of amino acids. Uh, here, uh, this represents a carboxylic group of one amino acid forming amide linkage with the second amino acid and so on. That results in the formation of a uh, poly amino acid, which, which are nothing but uh, proteins. Now, these uh, amino acids, because uh, they contain these amide linkages. So, therefore, they are also referred as they are nothing but polyamides. The nature of the polymer if we see proteins, proteins are polyamides and uh, they are formed from alpha amino acids and uh, already you have learnt about alpha amino acids because there are about uh, 20 to 21 alpha amino acids. They are like glycine, valine, uh, alanine, lysine, uh, etcetera. They are the different alpha amino acids, and these alpha amino acids polymerize to form the uh, proteins. Now, these proteins they are uh, classified depending upon the uh, number of amino acids uh, that are present in a given uh, a polymer. A dipeptide. These amino acids they are held together by amide bond. This amide bond which is holding together different amino acids is also referred as a peptide bond, referred as a peptide bond. Now, they are classified uh, depending upon the number of alpha amino acids that are present. So, dipeptide name indicates it is the one which contains two amino acid. It contains two units of amino acid. So, a peptide formed from two amino acids is known as dipeptide. Similarly, if we go for a tripeptide, it contains three units of amino acids or in general a peptide containing three to ten units of amino acid is known as oligopeptide. And if more than ten units are present, it is referred as a polypeptide greater than 10 units of amino acids and so therefore, proteins are it is difficult to differentiate between a polypeptide and protein, but proteins are considered as a very large peptides. So, therefore, based on the number of amino acid units that are present in a peptide they are classified into dipeptide is the one which contains two units of amino acid 
tripeptide is the one which contains 3 units and if we go for uh, tetrapeptide then which contains 4 units of amino acid and so on. Uh, in general uh, peptide containing 3 to 10 units of amino acid is known as oligopeptide and in a given peptide if more than 10 units of amino acid are present it is referred as a polypeptide and the proteins are nothing but they are the large peptides. Uh, representation of peptide structure. Now this, uh, so from the uh, from this introduction, we have seen that peptide is nothing but a polyamide of alpha amino acids. Uh, a convention is used in representing the peptide structure. What is that? Is now this peptide? Uh, it contains uh, at one end it contains uh, amino group free and at the other end it contains a carboxylic group free because it is formed as a polymer from alpha amino acids and amino acids are held together by peptide bonds. Peptide bond is nothing but the bond between a uh, amino group of one carboxylic acid and carboxylic group of the second one. So, therefore, this peptide structure will contain at one end amino group free and at the other end carboxylic group free. So, therefore, what is the convention that is used in representing the peptide structure is always the amino group is represented the free amino group is represented at the left end. For example, if we take uh, a tripeptide, this is a tripeptide because it contains 3 units of amino acid. So, therefore, it is a tripeptide and we can see at one end amino group is free and at the other end carboxylic group is free. So, therefore, the convention used in representing peptide structure is always the free amino end is represented at the left end and carboxylic group is represented at the right end. So, the amino acid with free amino group is known as N terminal amino acid and the amino acid with free carboxylic group is known as C terminal amino acid and uh, the amide bonds which are holding these amino acids together is referred as a peptide bond. So, this is the convention that is used in representing the pro, uh, peptide structure. That means always the free amino end is represented at the left side and free carboxylic group is represented at the right side. The uh, amino acid with free amino group is known as N terminal amino acid and uh, the amino acid with free carboxylic group is known as C terminal amino acid. Now, the next one is uh, naming these uh, peptides or proteins that is nomenclature nomenclature. Uh, how to name these uh, peptides or proteins is? If you go for a particular specific example, a specific example, this is once again a tripeptide containing 3 amino acid units. So, you can see the first amino acid is glycine, second amino acid is alanine and third amino acid is valine. So, it is a tripeptide of glycine, alanine and valine. Now, how to name this tripeptide is leaving the C terminal amino acid for rest of the amino acids, uh, uh, you have to drop INE from the name of the amino acid and then uh, that is added by YL. So, for example, if glycine is there, amino acid glycine, INE from the name of the uh, glycine is dropped and then YL is added. So, therefore, it becomes glycyl, glycine becomes glycyl in naming the glycine becomes glycyl in naming the protein structure. So, therefore, leaving the C terminal amino acid for rest of the amino acids, uh, you have to drop INE from the name of the amino acid and then add YL and then name the amino acids in sequence. So, therefore, here the first amino acid is glycine. So, therefore, dropping uh, INE and then adding YL, it becomes glycyl. The next amino acid is alanine. Similarly, uh, the INE of the alanine is dropped and then it becomes alanyl. And the C terminal amino acid is named as such. So, therefore, the name of this tripeptide becomes glycyl alanyl valine. 
So, this is the nomenclature that is used for naming the proteins or, in, uh, or peptides. That is uh, the leaving except C terminal amino acids for rest of the amino acids IN is dropped and YL is added and then amino acids are named in sequence and the C terminal amino acid is uh, named at the end as such. So, here uh, the name of this particular peptide is glycyl arenyl valine. For simple peptides this is ok, but if you go for uh, polypeptides uh, it becomes uh, complicated, it becomes cumbersome. So, therefore, what is an uh, alternative method to name these uh, peptides is simply the abbreviations of the amino acids are used which are separated by hyphens. For example, here glycine, alanine and then valine that is the name of the type peptide. So, always the first one indicates N terminal amino acid and last one indicates the C terminal amino acid. So, therefore, this is the name of the peptide that is glycyl alanyl valine and further simplification is uh, it is just only the first letter of the amino acid is used. So, for example, this becomes G A and then D. So, that is the nomenclature of the peptide. Now, the next one in this is uh, synthesis of the peptide. Uh, synthesis of peptide, uh, let us uh, uh, explain this one by taking a dipeptide which can be extended to other uh, polypeptides. So, let us uh, take a dipeptide, synthesis of peptide. synthesis of peptides. So, uh, first uh, let us see what is the strategy involved in synthesis of peptides by taking a dipeptide. Uh, for example, uh, if you are interested in a dipeptide that is uh, glycyl alanine. For example, we are interested in synthesizing a dipeptide which is uh, uh, dipeptide of glycine and then alanine. So, then in order to prepare this uh, dipeptide, uh, if we take uh, um, two amino acids which are involved in this that is one is glycine, the other one is alanine and if you react these two, uh, this is uh, glycine that is glycine and then amino acid valine. So, in order to prepare this dipeptide that is glycyl alanine, if we take uh, the two amino acids glycine and valine and if you heat them together that results in the formation of a mixture of dipeptides. So, uh, what are the possible peptides that are obtained from this is uh, one possible peptide that can be obtained is by the reaction of two moles of glycine this is glycyl glycine then the second possibility is two molecules of valine, valine may react to give valyl valine that is another dipeptide this is uh, that is uh, sorry this is alanine two molecules of alanine may combine in the second possibility and that results in the formation of alanyl alanine. And third possibility is glycine may react, the carboxylic group of glycine may react with the amino group of alanine and that results in the formation of glycyl alanine. So, this is the third one. Now, the fourth one is the amino group of alanine may react with the carboxylic group of glycine and which results in the formation of alanyl glycine. So, therefore, if we attempt to prepare uh, the dipeptide glycyl alanine by the reaction of two amino acids glycine and alanine uh, that results in the formation of four possible dipeptides. So, that we can see the possibility is two glycine molecules reacting together forming glycyl glycinine, then two molecules of alanine reacting forming alanyl alanine and then it is the glycine reacting with alanine forming glycyl alanine and in the fourth combination it is the carboxylic group of alanine reacting with the amino group of the glycine. So, therefore, and what we are interested in preparing a particular one that is glycyl alanine and not the rest of the three. 
So, therefore, how to prepare a dipeptide or in general a peptide in the desired sequence of the amino acids. So, therefore, the strategy that is used here in synthesizing these peptides is or in order to avoid the rest of the uh, peptides and uh, uh, to obtain only the peptide which is required by us. So, therefore, what one has to do in preparing this uh, polypeptide is here in this case for example, we are interested in preparing glycylalanine, glycine is the one with free amino group. So, therefore, uh, the amino group of the glycine should not take part in the reaction. So, therefore, uh, how that can be achieved is by protecting the amino group of the glycine, we can avoid the participation of the amino group in the peptide bond formation. So, therefore, the strategy involves protecting the amino group of the N terminal amino acid. Then activating the same amino acid that is carboxylic group is activated uh, by the conversion to chlor acid chlorides or anhydrides for the amide bond formation. Then reacting with the second molecule of the amino acid. So, let us see the in this particular case. So, in preparing glycylalanine, since glycine is, uh, glycine is the N-terminal amino acid, so amino group of glycine is protected. And so, therefore, first step involves uh, protection of amino group of N-terminal amino acid. A protection of amino group of N-terminal amino acid. Now, the groups which uh, used commonly here in this peptide synthesis is like uh, carbobenzyloxy group. So, that is protection sorry protection of uh, N-terminal amino acid. The next step is uh, activation. of carboxylic group. First step is uh, protection of the amino group of N terminal amino acid. Second step is activation of carboxylic group of uh, protected amino acid. Now, the third step is, so the third step is uh, uh, reaction of this protected activated amino acid with the second molecule of amino acid. This results in the formation of the peptide bond that is the activated carboxylic group of the first amino acid reacts with the amino group of the second amino acid and forms the dipeptide and once the dipeptide is obtained then deprotection. Deprotection of the amino group that results in the formation of a dipeptide. Suppose if one desires to synthesis dipeptide then synthesis can be stopped here or if one wants to synthesize further then amino acids are added in sequence in the desired sequence following the same procedure. So, this is the strategy that is used in synthesis of a peptide. So, here that uh, the first step involves is uh, protection of amino group of a N terminal amino acid then activation of the same carboxylic group then uh, adding second molecule of amino acid then removing the protecting group. So, in general if we take this is the N terminal amino acid the first step is protection of this one then second step is activation activation and in the third step reacting this with the second molecule of amino acid. Now, uh, let us uh, take this, uh, I will explain this one taking the example for the synthesis of the dipeptide that is glycylalanine. Now, in order to prepare glycylalanine here glycine is the N terminal amino acid. So, therefore, the first step is protect, uh, protection of amino group of glycine first step is protection. The one of the uh, common protecting group that is used in the peptide synthesis is known as benzyloxy carbonyl chloride. Benzyloxy carbonyl chloride is one of the protecting group used and this is simply acylation reaction on amino group and which is carried out in the presence of a base. This results in uh, this is uh, N protected glycine that is N benzyloxy carbonyl glycine. This is uh, this step is protection that is protecting the group. The glycine that is uh, amino group of glycine is protected. Protection is nothing but reducing the reactivity of the amino group. 
reducing the reactivity of the amino group. Now, this is the first step in uh, peptide synthesis. Now, the second step in this is, so I am writing continuously, this is continuation. Second step is activating the same carboxylic group, because we know that the carboxylic group is uh, very less reactive. So, therefore, activating in the sense is converting the less reactive carboxylic group to the more reactive uh, functional group. So, one of the functional group which is uh, more reactive uh, is the derivative of carboxylic acid, which is nothing but acid chloride. So, therefore, converting this to acid chloride that constitutes the second step. So, this is uh, N protected and activated glycine. Now, in the third step, this is reacted with the amino acid alanine, because that is the one which is required here for the synthesis of dipeptide. Now, the amino group of this one alanine reacts with this acid chloride of the glycine and that results in the formation of dipeptide. So, here this is resulting in the formation of a dipeptide. Now, once dipeptide is obtained then the next step involves removal of this protecting group D protection and here uh, the deprotection is done by catalytic hydrogenation which removes uh, benzyl group as a toluene by the catalytic hydrogenation benzyl oxy group can be removed and this results in the formation of. So, this is uh, uh, that is synthesis of a dipeptide that is glycyl alanine. So, therefore, you can see clearly here how this is uh, synthesized or the strategy what we are using in synthesizing a polypeptide is uh, we are taking first N terminal amino acid. Uh, and then protecting the amino group. So, here uh, the requirement for uh, protection of these uh, amino group is there are uh, different protecting groups that can be used for this purpose. One of the commonly used group is known as benzyloxy carbonyl chloride. Um, why this particular chloride is uh, used is because in the last stage it has to be removed from the reaction that is deprotection. So, deprotection should be done under the mild conditions without affecting the peptide bond that is present. So, therefore, uh, the, that is one of the requirement for the protecting group which should be deprotected under mild conditions. So, this particular group can be uh, deprotected by catalytic hydrogenation and this will not affect the amide bond. So, that is the reason why this is used commonly as protecting group and there are several other groups. The one more protecting group commonly that is used is known as tertiary butyl oxycarbonyl chloride which is abbreviated as a TBOC. Uh, so, but here I have explained taking benzyl oxy carbonyl chloride. So, first step is protection that results in the formation of N protected glycine. Now, next is activating the same amino acid uh, with the formation of the corresponding acid chloride. Now, this protected activated amino acid glycine is reacted uh, with alanine that results in the formation of the peptide bond. So, here uh, in this uh, during the peptide formation bond it is the free amino group is reacting with activated carboxylic group. There is a possibility of reacting uh, the amino group of the alanine with the carboxylic group of the same alanine which results in the formation of alanine alanine, but that can be avoided here why because in the case of alanine carboxylic group is not activated whereas here this is activated. So, amino group alanine preferably reacts with activated carboxylic group. So, thus formation of alanine alanine is prevented. So, then in the sec once the peptide bond is formed and if we are interested in preparing only the dipeptide then it is the removal of the protecting group and here this is done with catalytic hydrogenation where it is eliminated as a toluene and carbon dioxide. If one is interested in uh, continuing the synthesis, then the same steps are repeated so that uh, polypeptide is formed. So, what are the next steps is once again activation, activation of the carboxylic group, then addition of the third amino acid, addition of the amino acid. Uh, results in tripeptide. 
tripeptide and the process can be continued till the uh, desired peptide is synthesized. So, therefore, uh, activation and then the amino acid in sequence that is added and that results in the formation of tripeptide. If tripeptide is only required then here the next step will be the deprotection. So, this is the strategy involved in the synthesis of peptide. So, this is about the proteins the next one is will take up lipids. The word lipid is uh, derived from a Greek word uh, that is uh, lipos. Lipos is a Greek word means fat. So, therefore, the name lipids is derived from a Greek word lipos means fat that means lipids uh, they are the biomolecules known uh, referred also as a fat. Now, if we see what are lipids or what are the different uh, comp bioorganic compounds that come under lipids is. So, already you have learnt about uh, proteins and carbohydrates. Proteins and carbohydrates they are defined by the structure. Proteins and carbohydrates are defined by the structure that means, uh, carbohydrates you know they are uh, uh, polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones uh, they are known as carbohydrates. Whereas, uh, proteins which are de, uh, which are formed from the polymers, uh, they are polymers of amino acids that means, they contain amino group and carboxyl group. So, that means, normally we classify organic compounds based on structure, but here when we come to the lipids, uh, here lipids are classified not based on the structure, but uh, based on their solubility. So, what are lipids are? Lipids are the bioorganic compounds which are soluble in nonpolar solvents like uh, chloroform and ether and they are insoluble in water. So, therefore, the lipids are defined by the property by which they are isolated from the uh, living system, uh, we, they are isolated from the these compounds. So, for example, here, so lipids are the compounds which are soluble. So, that means, we are differentiating here. So, carbohydrates and proteins they are defined uh, by their uh, structure, whereas lipids are defined based on the property by which they are isolated. That means, they are isolated by extraction with nonpolar solvents like chloroform and ether. Hence, what are lipids are? Lipids represent a group of uh, uh, bioorganic compounds which are soluble in nonpolar solvents like chloroform, ether and are insoluble in water. And uh, so, therefore, these lipids they include a wide diversity of compounds. They include a wide variety of compounds. For example, uh, we see what are uh, some of the examples under lipid. Uh, this is uh, they are known as uh, triglycerides. They are one of the class of lipids. Uh, this is uh, cholesterol that is also comes under uh, lipid. So, this is uh, vitamin E. So, they all belongs to the class of lipids. This is uh, fat triglyceride. So, because they are defined uh, by their uh, solubility, so they include a wide variety of structures. For example, you can see some of the examples I have given here. Uh, the triglyceride which is an ester comes under uh, lipid, cholesterol that is also comes under lipid and then vitamin A. Now, uh, what are these uh, main functions of the lipids is? So, if you see what is the role of lipids is, uh, they store the energy, they are energy reservoirs and uh, these lipids they are components of cell membrane and uh, for example, cholesterol it is precursor for steroidal hormones and they also store uh, some of the uh, vitamins. They store some of the vitamins like vitamin A, D, K, etcetera and they act as a insulators uh, for some of the vital organs. So, these are the main uh, functions of the lipids, they are the source for uh, energy, they are energy reservoirs, they store the energy and uh, they, they are the components of the cell membrane and uh, cholesterol it is a precursor for steroidal hormones 
and uh, it, that stores vitamin these uh, lipids they store vitamins like vitamin A, D etcetera and uh, they also act as insulators for some of the vital organs. Now this uh, next one is classification. So then the next is uh, we will see classification of lipids. Uh, lipids are classified mainly into two types uh, they are known as uh, simple, lip, simple lipids and then compound lipids. Uh, what are simple lipids are? The simple lipids include simple lipids include fats, oils and waxes. Uh, fats and oils are uh, triglycerides. Uh, these triglycerides uh, they are uh, come under simple lipids they you can see here they are the triglycerides here they are the esters of the glycerol the alcohol component that is present here it is glycerol glycerol is propane 1 2 3 triol that is esterified with uh, carboxylic group of an a fatty acid where R1, R2, R3 represents a fatty acid alkyl group from the fatty acid. So therefore they come under uh, uh, simple lipids. Now what is a fat and what is oil is? Uh, fat represents uh, solid triglyceride. So this um, this is in general a structure of a triglyceride. Now what is the difference between fat and oil is? Fat represents the solid triglyceride and then oil represents the liquid triglyceride this means whether it is in solid form or liquid form. If the triglyceride is in solid form it is known as a fat and if it is in liquid form it is known as oil and uh, that means it is whether it is a solid or liquid at room temperature accordingly they are classified into fats and oils. Now normally fat means the alkyl component which is coming from the fatty acid it contains a saturated fatty acids. The fatty acid component here if it is in saturated form then it will be a solid at room temperature and referred as a fat whereas in liquid triglyceride it is unsaturated fatty acids that are present. Unsaturated means mostly they contain double bonds and that too they contain double bond in cis configuration. Now whereas waxes are uh, waxes are once again esters of the fatty acids with long chain alcohols that means instead of glycerol uh, it is long chain alcohol that is present then they are known as waxes. So these uh, they come under simple lipids. Now in simple lipids uh, they, they are uh, they include fats, oils and waxes. Fats and oils are triglyceride. Triglycerides in the sense the alcohol component is glycerol which is ester in ester form with the fatty acid. Now fat is in which a saturated fatty acids are present and in oil it is unsaturated fatty acid especially with the double bonds in cis configuration are present. Now waxes are once again they are esters, they are esters of fatty acids but instead of glycerol they are in ester with the long chain alcohols. Now the next class of lipids that include. Uh, uh, they include uh, compound lipids. Now before going to the compound lipids, now what is the main uh, function of the simple lipids is uh, they are energy reservoirs. They store the energy. So therefore mainly they act as uh, energy reservoirs in animals. The role of these simple uh, that is fats or oils is mainly they act as a energy reservoirs. The next one is compound lipids. The compound lipids uh, they include uh, different lipids like uh, phospholipids, spingiolipids. So compound lipids uh, other than glycerol and fatty acid. Uh, they contain like a phosphorus moiety 
or a carbohydrate moiety etc. So, therefore, uh, they are known as compound lipids and they include uh, different classes like phospholipids, pinzolipids and glycolipids. Now, what are phospholipids are? So, here phospholipids once again they contain glycerol moiety. Now, uh, two hydroxy groups of the glycerol are ester esterified with a fatty acid. Now, this represents a general structure for phospholipid. So, if we see how it is different from triglycerides, once again this is contains a glycerol and here two hydroxy groups of glycer glycerol are in ester with fatty acids, whereas third one is uh, esterified with a phosphoric acid. So, therefore, it contains a phosphorus, hence named as a phospholipid. Now, this this is in further esterified, uh, further in combination with different uh, alcohols like uh, uh, serine, choline, ethanol, I mean where we get different specific phospholipids. So, this is in general the structure of the phospholipid. Now, what is the main role of the phospholipids is they are components of cell membrane. They are components of the cell membrane. So, we know the importance of the cell membrane which acts as a selective permeable uh, barrier. Uh, this uh, uh, cell membrane uh, that represents the boundary of the cell which is made up of uh, two layers of the phospholipids. Now, the next class of lipids here it is spingolipids. In spingolipids, instead of uh, glycerol moiety, they, they contain spingosin. Now, this is known as spingosin. So, in uh, spingolipids, the glycerol is replaced by spingosin, and here the fatty acid is attached to the amino group of the spingosin. So, if you see one of the specific examples. So, that is one of the example. Uh, uh, this uh, represents a spingolipid structure. So, this is uh, where R represents a fatty acid. So, this is the structure of the spingolipid. Uh, where uh, they instead of glycerol they contain spingosin moiety and uh, fatty acid is attached to the amino group of the spingosin. So, therefore, what we see in uh, uh, triglycerides and phospholipids is the ester linkage and here in spingosin we see the amide linkage. So, this is a general structure for the spingolipid and R is the alkyl portion that is present in the uh, corresponding fatty acid. Now, what is the role of these spingolipids is mainly they are uh, found in uh, nerve cells, cell membrane of the nerve cells. Nerve cells. So, they where they act as the insulators. They act as the insulators uh, during the nerve conduction. So, this is about the uh, uh, in compound lipids, phospholipids, spingolipids and third one is glycolipid. So, glycolipid indi indicates that it they contain the sugar moiety. So, here uh, the terminal CH2 group of the spingosin, if it is attached to a carbohydrate like uh, glucose or galactose, then uh, that comes under uh, glycolipid. Uh, that is uh, in general. that is uh, here it is uh, instead of this phosphorus group here the terminal CH2 of this spingosin it is linked to glucose or galactose or galactose then it is referred as a glycolipid glycolipid and this is uh, general known as cerebroside. So, this is the compound lipids. Now, by seeing these structures easily you can differentiate compound lipids from the simple lipids. Simple lipids mainly they contain glycerol in ester form with the fatty acids, whereas compound lipids uh, they contain uh, additional component like phosphorus or sugar. Uh, so, here phospholipids they contain phosphorus, uh, whereas in spingolipids it is uh, glycerol is replaced by spingosin. And uh, in glycolipids, we find a carbohydrate moiety. Now, the other uh, lipids, the other lipids, they include uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol comes under the category of that is steroids. Uh, they include the other class of lipids. And now, steroids uh, can be uh, sterols or bile acids or uh, uh, steroidal hormones. Uh, 
Now these steroids are they are characterized by a tetracyclic uh, carbon skeleton which is known as cyclopentinoperhydrophenanthrene. Steroids they are characterized by this tetracyclic skeleton uh, which is known as cycloperhydrophenanthrene. Cyclopentino perhydrophenanthrene. So, they are characterized by this skeleton. Now, uh, one of the member is uh, cholesterol. The cholesterol structure is this re represents the structure of cholesterol. Now, the next class of lipids they include steroids. Steroids uh, again they include three main classes like sterols that is steroidal alcohols are known as sterols and then bile acids and then uh, steroidal hormones. So, in that uh, if you take uh, sterols cholesterol is one of the example for the sterols. So, this is the structure of the cholesterol and uh, cholesterol is once again it is the component in uh, cell membrane. It is the component in uh, cell membrane where you can see the hydroxy group present in cholesterol which will be uh, in ester form with the fatty acid and it becomes the component of the cell membrane where it provides rigidity to the cell membrane. It provides rigidity to the cell membrane. Then the another function of the cholesterol is it is precursor for steroidal hormones. Uh, steroidal hormones include sex hormones and also adrenocortical hormones. So, where cholesterol is the precursor for these hormones and uh, this is uh, human gallstones they are mainly the uh, source they are rich in cholesterol. They are the chief source for the cholesterol and uh, this is also found in blood plasma. It is also found in blood plasma and lipoproteins. Now, the next member here we can take the example of ergosterol. The next member in the sterols is ergosterol. This is the structure of the ergosterol and this is the precursor for vitamin D. Now, this ergosterol uh, undergoes a photochemical reaction and then transformed into vitamin D. So, that is uh, it undergoes a photochemical transformation. So, therefore, into a vitamin D. So, therefore, ergosterol is precursor for the vitamin D. So, this is the structure of vitamin D. Now, one more member in this uh, we can see that is progesterone. It is one of the female sex hormone. So, this is the structure of progesterone. It is a pregnancy hormone maintains the pregnancy. So, there are many other hormones uh, in this category, but giving just one example that is uh, progesterone uh, which maintains the pregnancy. The next is reactions of these uh, lipids. Now, in these uh, different classes of lipids, uh, we have seen that mainly they contain the functional groups like carboxylic acids. Uh, esters, hydroxy groups and carbon-carbon double bonds. So, therefore, the lipids mainly undergo the reactions of they undergo reactions of carboxylic groups like esterification or reduction one of the example if we take reduction and uh, they undergo reactions of uh, OH group, OH group like dehydration or uh, esterification etcetera and uh, since they contain even ester functional group they undergo reactions of esters like hydrolysis. And since they contain carbon-carbon double bonds, they undergo reduction of double bonds, reduction of double bonds, addition, etcetera. 
So therefore, the lipids they undergo reactions uh, which are uh, like reactions of a carboxylic group or reactions of a hydroxy group or reactions of a ester, reactions of the double bonds etcetera. Now if we see some of the reactions here, some of the reactions if we see one is hydrolysis. this is in general triglyceride which is an ester. So, this undergoes hydrolysis uh, if it is subjected to hydrolysis with enzyme lipase that is enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis results in the formation of glycerol, glycerol with mixture of the fatty acids. So, this is enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis of triglyceride which results in the formation of a glycerol and fatty acid. Same triglyceride can be subjected to hydrolysis with, with sodium hydroxide and that is uh, sodium hydroxide hydrolysis of glyceride uh, is also known as saponification that is base catalyzed hydrolysis of ester also known as a saponification. Now, what is the difference here? It is once again here it results in the formation of glycerol. glycerol. Now, instead of a free fatty acid here since base is used uh, we are going to get uh, uh, the salts of the fatty acids that is sodium salts of the fatty acids. Sodium salts of fatty acids which are nothing but used as a soap. They are used as uh, they are used in detergents. So this is one of the reaction of uh, lipid where uh, they undergo hydrolysis of the ester linkage. Uh, it can be an enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis or a base catalyzed hydrolysis. The next reaction is uh, reduction of the double bond. That is hydrogenation. The next reaction is hydrogenation that is reduction of the carbon carbon double bond which is present in the fatty acid moiety. Uh, this is just one uh, specific lipid this represents a, a triglyceride. Now, uh, at the beginning we have seen that while classifying lipids uh, if the fatty acid component contains unsaturated double bonds with the double bonds in cis configuration uh, this represents an oil which is an oil at room temperature. Now, these double bonds can be subjected to hydrogenation that is hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst hydrogenation where double bonds undergo reduction and that results in the formation of a, a saturated fat uh, that is solid. This I am representing a C18 fatty acid. Now, this is uh, the one which is obtained when this is subjected to reduction in the presence of uh, uh, that is hydrogen in the presence of catalyst that is catalytic hydrogenation. Now, this represents a fat. So, then one of the reaction of the lipids is hydrogenation where we can see if we take unsaturated fat which is an oil if it is subjected to catalytic hydrogenation this is converted into a solid uh, that is oil is converted into fat, fat is nothing but a solid at room temperature. So, catalytic hydrogenation that is resulting in the hardening so therefore, this process is also referred as hardening. This is also the hydrogenation process it is also known as hardening since it is resulting in the hardening. Uh, now, the one more reaction of this one is since beta carotene is also comes under lipid uh, this is uh, this represents the structure of beta carotene. Beta carotene which is a pigment uh, which is uh, responsible for the color of the carrots uh, in the body it undergoes metabolism to give uh, two molecules of vitamin A. So, this is uh, just one more reaction and this reaction is specially it is in the living system where beta carotene is converted into vitamin A. So, this is about the reactions of the uh, lipids the next one is lipid metabolism lipid metabolism. When we say lipid metabolism it uh, involves uh, biosynthesis of the lipids as well as uh, degradation of the lipids. Now, what is the biosynthesis of lipids is 
Uh, biosynthesis of lipids uh, starts from acetyl coenzyme A. It starts from acetyl coenzyme A. This, this is a two carbon unit. Acetyl coenzyme A will be converted to melanyl coenzyme A. It reacts with carbon dioxide and uh, converted into melanyl coenzyme A. Melanyl coenzyme A further reacts with acetyl coenzyme A results in the formation of beta keto acyl coenzyme A results in the formation of beta keto acyl coenzyme A which undergoes reduction dehydration again reduction of the double bond forming uh, acyl coenzyme A that means here Um, this is biosynthesis of lipids. It starts from two carbon unit, which is nothing but acetyl coenzyme A, which initially converted into melanyl coenzyme A, which uh, further reacts with uh, acetyl coenzyme A, forming a four carbon unit, which is referred as a beta keto acyl coenzyme A. Now, this undergoes reduction, dehydration, and reduction, giving finally acyl coenzyme A containing four carbon units. Now, the process further continues in each step two carbon units will be added until the desired fatty acid is obtained. So, the steps are repeated till the fatty just now we have seen that in the lipid structure C18 acid is represented which is known as stearic acid. So, therefore, for example, if it has to be biosynthesized acid is stearic acid, the required number here up till here stage it contains 4 carbon units and 14 more units are added to at a stage finally, it results in the formation of the uh, stearic acid and once stearic acid is formed, it may react with glycerol to form a triglyceride or it may react with the uh, spingosin and that results in the formation of the spingolipid. So, this is in general biosynthesis of lipids which just I am explaining briefly it's uh, the, it's it starts from acetyl coenzyme a and then uh, converted into melanyl coenzyme a which further reacts with acetyl coenzyme a forming beta keto acyl coenzyme a and the process is repeated at each stage two carbon units are added to the growing chain this is biosynthesis now the degradation of lipids that is catabolism lipids they lipids they undergo hydrolysis to give the corresponding fatty acid and fatty acid undergoes degradation by the method uh, that is known as beta oxidation it is referred as beta oxidation and beta oxidation eliminates uh, two carbon units at a time the two carbon unit is acetyl coenzyme A. So, totally that will be converted into for example, if you are taking a stearic acid which contains 18 carbons. So, by the process of beta oxidation a stearic acid will results in the formation of 9 molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. Now, this acetyl coenzyme A enters into the citric acid cycle where it will be oxidized to CO2 oxidized to CO2 and then liberating the energy that is ATP. So, this is a degradation of the fatty acids. So, therefore, fatty acids undergo degradation by the process known as beta oxidation. That means, the beta carbon of this undergoes oxidation uh, then followed by the elimination of the two carbon unit from the fatty acid. So, at a time in each cycle it eliminates uh, two carbon unit which is acetyl coenzyme A. So, then the acetyl coenzyme A then enters into the citric acid cycle uh, followed by the oxidation where it is completely oxidized liberating uh, ATP. So, this is about the reaction uh, uh, lipid metabolism. The last one is uh, analysis of uh, uh, one is known as saponification number. Now, what is saponification number is uh, this is uh, the the milligrams of the base KOH that is required to hydrolyze one, gro uh, 1 gram of uh, fat that is number of milligrams of KOH uh, which are required to hydrolyze required to hydrolyze 1 gram of fat is known as saponification number. 
saponification number is number of milligrams of the KOH required to hydrolyze 1 gram of fat. Now, we have seen that fat is nothing but triglyceride. Triglyceride means it contains three, extern, uh, three ester functional groups. So, therefore, if we take uh, one mole of uh, fat, if we take one mole of fat, it consumes uh, three moles of uh, KOH because since uh, uh, three ester linkages are present in a fat. So, if you are hydrolyzing one mole of fat, it consumes uh, three moles of KOH that means uh, that is uh, weight of KOH is 56 uh, that comes to 168 grams and uh, that is converted into milligrams. That means, uh, 168,000 milligrams of the KOH is required uh, to hydrolyze uh, 1 mole of fat. Now, here saponification number involves 1 gram of fat. So, saponification of uh, saponification number, number is equivalent to where m represents the molecular weight of the fat. So, therefore, saponification number gives you the idea about the molecular weight of the lipid. So, if the sub if the molecular weight is very less then saponification number will be high. So, saponification number high indicates the high molecular weight lipid. If the saponification number is low then it indicates the if, if this if the molecular weight of the lipid is low saponification number will be high then uh, molecular weight of the lipid will be low and vice versa that is opposite. The next parameter that is known as iodine value. The next one is iodine value. Uh, this iodine value uh, measures the degree of the unsaturation that is present in fat lipid degree of it measures the degree of unsaturation. Because we have seen that in unsaturated uh, fatty acids, they contain double bonds. Double bonds can add the iodine uh, iodine molecule. They can undergo the addition of iodine. So, therefore, uh, what is the iodine value? So, it is referred as iodine number. So, what is iodine number is the number of grams of iodine required the number of grams of iodine required to saturate 100 grams of fat. Now, what is iodine number is the next one. It measures the degree of the unsaturation present in the fat. The iodine number is the number of grams of iodine required to saturate 100 grams of fat. So, here this is nothing but addition of iodine to the double bond. So, therefore, more the number of uh, double bonds present, more the iodine that is consumed by the fat. Hence, iodine uh, number will be greater. So, if the iodine number is greater, that indicates more number of double bonds are present in the given fat. So, that means, if the iodine number is high, high degree of unsaturation it indicates. If the iodine number is low, then it indicates the low degree of the unsaturation. So, this is about the analysis of the lipids. So, with this we complete uh, these bioorganic reactions, where we mainly concentrated on uh, uh, proteins and uh, uh, lipids. The other uh, class is carbohydrates, which you have learnt at the PUC level. So, in proteins, we have seen what are proteins and then uh, representing the structure of the protein, nomenclature of the protein, followed by how to synthesize a protein or a peptide. Then, uh, coming to the fats. Uh, we have defined the fat, what is the fat and what are the different uh, compounds that come under uh, fats and then how they are classified into uh, simple fats and compound fats and how simple fats are different from the compound fats and what are their functions and then the reactions of these uh, lipids, finally the metabolism of the lipid and then analysis of the lipids.